Call you want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You're, you're I feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. This guy is at Miami International Airport. So let me give you some background to this. Um, Ron Filipkowski posted the video, which details full, a full minute of a belligerent and wildly combative male Karen. Who Local 10, that's your local agency, their news agency, identified as a military veteran. Several people on their cell phones captured the incident. Per the report, the man was then denied boarding on the flight due to his aggressive and possibly, possibly intoxicated behavior. All right? It gets even deeper. Per Local 10, police later said that man was a military veteran who was going into some form of crisis. Yes, it's called Karenicity. Correct. After being taken into custody, the Miami-Dade police brought the man, not to jail, but to a treatment center for evaluation. Now remember, this guy was not only violent, physically aggressive, committed multiple acts of assault, called black people the N-word. Don't forget, okay? Now, he was taken to an evaluation center, not jail. Onlookers believe the male Karen may have been inebriated and he had already entered the woman's restroom near gate D23 and got into a physical altercation with his girlfriend. Many of the comments related to the idea that this male Karen was able to carry on for such a long period of time. Another person tweeted, now imagine if he wasn't white. There will be a lot less, please calm down, sir. And a lot more, a man was shot today by airport police after violently attacking airport staff. Dina Dahl, your thoughts here. I don't know why the police kind of bolt and led with the fact that he was a military veteran. You know, I mean, we should have compassion of what military vets go through. But there are a lot of people in this country who are dealing with mental illness and addiction. And this, you know, he should have been brought to a mental treatment. But so should so many other people who the police are called by instances that aren't actually criminal so much as mm-hmm. driven by mental health. And police departments don't have enough mental health officer training on their staff to deal with this. So, yeah. okay, we saw here that they were able to deal with this. How come we don't see this more often? Because it's actually an epidemic in this country, mental health and addiction. And, you know, his behavior, I don't know why, you know, other than like what you already said, like mm-hmm. some sort of racial element, why he was treated so differently. But if they know how to do it, they should be doing it so much more because people really do need help most of the time yeah. and not a police officer. Let me tell you what I think happened here. I think there's an unfair and unequal application of the law. Because you're right, Ms. Dahl, you get a black person there having a mental health issue, committing acts of criminality, violence, tearing up the airport, calling white people racial slurs. He doesn't get the same treatment, he's going to jail. He's not going to get, well, let's analyze, let's evaluate, let's make sure he's medically okay. And that's what we're saying, we have to be fair, we have to be equitable. And the application of the law and how we treat humanity, that's what has to happen, okay? And I also believe some of those cops, they agreed with him politically. 
I think some of those cop are anti-maskers. I believe that. And I believe that they believe that he's right. He's fundamentally right politically and personally. He's right, and so they give him a benefit. And let's not miss the veteran connection because that's what the police decided to lead with. They wanted to build a case for why they decided to treat him differently.